In the previous video, we took a look at batch calculating toolpaths, and I explained that using these in a combination with toolpath templates is where it really becomes a useful tool. So here you can see the example that I created, and what I would like to do is, rather than just do one of these, I would like to do a whole bunch of them on a sheet. And let's say that I wanted to maybe change the names on there. So rather than having to create all of the toolpaths again, what I'm going to do is export it out as vectors, and I'm going to create a toolpath template for it. So I'll explain to you how to create the templates. Now it's useful because what happens is when you import these in, the template will already know where to assign the toolpaths to. And all that you need to do is just click batch calculate and it will calculate them. So in order to do this, what I need to do is put each of these elements onto a different layer. So let's delete the simulation first of all and I'm going to turn on the vectors, okay? And I'm also going to turn off the visibility of the toolpath. So I've just got these vectors. Let's take a plan view of that and zoom in. Now, if I open up the vector layers, you can see that all of these are on the default layer. So what I'm going to do is assign these to different layers. So if I select Happy anniversary, Bob and Jen. I'm going to right click on there, move vectors to new layer. And I'm going to call this text. Select a color for it. You don't need to do this, I'm just doing it so it looks nicer. Okay, so that's now green. This is going to go to another layer. And let's call this maybe groove. And let's say that this one is blue. And let's move this one to a new layer. And let's call this one maybe outside. And I'm going to say that this one is maybe this peachy color. Okay, so those are all on different layers. So if I right click on the light bulbs, you can see I've got the outside, I've got groove, and I've got the text, okay? Right, so now what I need to do is to recalculate these toolpaths. I need to reconfigure them. The reason being is at the moment, if I go into VBit carving, you can see that it's the vector association is selected vectors. I don't want this. Even though it's selecting the correct vectors, when I load in the template, it will only use these vectors that I've got selected. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is click the drop down, and I want to do this over the text layer. So it will anything that is on that text layer, it will try to do a V-bit carving of. So let's calculate that. Let's do the same with this profile, and going to be on the groove. So I don't need to have that selected and calculate. And then profile one, that's going to be the outside and calculate. Okay, so that's done exactly the same thing. If I want to try it out, simulate all the toolpaths, let's take a look. It's done exactly the same thing as I've done previously. Okay, so let's delete the simulation and Let's take a look at it. Okay, so those toolpaths are okay. So what I want to do is export these toolpaths as a template, okay? So select toolpaths, and then down here, you can save toolpath as a template. So if I click that, it opens up a dialog box asking me where I want to save that. I'll just do it onto the desktop, and I'll call this maybe plaque. Okay, and then select save, and it saves it as a TPL file, which is a toolpath template. Okay, so select save, and then those toolpaths are saved. So if I bring in anything that's on these layers, the same layers, 
in the future, I can just load in that template and it will automatically assign toolpaths to it. Okay, so what I want to do is export these out because at the moment, if you take a look at the model size, it's 12 inches by 12 inches. Let's say that I've got a sheet, let's say a two by four sheet, and I want to get as many of these out of that sheet as I possibly can, okay? So what I'm going to do is export the vectors out. So let's go to export. And normally what you would want to do is use a DXF file to do this because it preserves layers. The difference between these two DXF files is that the AC1009 is an old ArtCam format, okay, prior to, I think it was 2015. Now, I'm not going to use that. The reason being is that I tried it before, and what happens is it imports everything back as capital letters. So you can see on purpose, I've created these with just one capital letter at the start. So if I were to bring these back in, let's say the text, for instance, that would come in as all capitals. And the toolpath template wouldn't work because it wouldn't find that exact layer. Okay. Now, if ever you're not sure about anything within the program, because I'll be completely honest with you, I wasn't sure what the difference was between these two DXFs. So if you're not sure about anything, then what I would do, go to help and then reference help. And then as you can see here, I search for DXF. So if you just do a search and then at the very top, you get a list of topics it just happened to be the top one. So exporting vector layers. And here, it gives me the differences between them. So it says the AC1009 one, select this format to use the export method that was used by ArtCam until version 2015. Okay, so if ever you get stuck on anything or you don't know what it is, then I strongly advise that you take a look in the reference help because it will more than likely be in there and give you an explanation of what that actually is. Okay, so let's export out again. So right click, export, and I'm going to choose DXF. Okay, and I'm just going to call this plaque vectors, and then let's save. Okay, so I've saved the vectors, I've saved the toolpath template, so I can start a completely new job. Let's say that this is in a week's time. I've had lots of orders for these plaques. So let's go to File, uh, New Model, and I'm going to do this by four foot by two. Set the origin to be at the bottom left, and select OK. I'm not going to save the changes. And now you can see it's set up my model. Okay, so let's import the vectors. Now, there are a couple of ways to do that. You could do vector import, or what I tend to do is go to the vector layers and import. Now, by default, it will be on current layer. Okay, so if I were to select that and select open, just select okay for that, open up the vector layers, you can see that it's all on one layer. It's on the default layer, okay? That's not what I want, okay? So let's delete that, and I'm going to do it again. So import. This time, let's select it. This time, I'm going to preserve the layers, okay? So it's going to bring them in exactly how I want them. Select open, and you can see, select okay that it's imported the layers exactly how I wanted them. Now, you'll also see that in red, it's imported the toolpaths as well. So what we need to do is either turn those off with the light bulb, or because we don't really need them, just right click and delete. Now, when you do delete them, it will ask you that 
there are vectors on that layer. Do you want to move them to the default layer? Now, most of the time you may want to do that, but I'm going to say no, because I want to delete them. Okay, and that's deleted all of them. Right, so what I can do now is move this to the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, a quick way to do this, you could either just grab it and move it down, but if you want it to be a little bit more accurate, what you can do is select the vectors, go to transform, and then change the origin position to be the bottom left, and then just tell it how far you want it to be indented from the edge. So let's say I want it to be half an inch by half an inch and select apply. And then that gives me a gap from both of the edges of half an inch, okay? Now, what I would probably do is put that origin back to the center before you close the tool because if you want to then change sizes of anything, it will do it from that bottom left-hand corner and not the center. So I tend to try to put that back into the center before I leave the tool. Okay, so I've left the tool now and you can see that it's half an inch in from the edges. Right, so I want to create some copies of this. Now, you could use nesting to do this, but it's a little bit overkill because it's just a square shape. And a much easier way to do it is use block copy rotate. So if I select all of that and then go to the block and rotate copy and I've already entered the gap of half an inch and half an inch, that seems to be fine. I want it to go right and upwards and columns. So that's how many columns that I have going in X. Let's say five rows, maybe three rows. I think that I won't get any more than that in there. Let's actually put four. I'll show you just in case it goes over and then select apply. Okay, so you can see that it's created lots of copies. Now, obviously these ones at the top, I can't use them because they're going over the sheet. So all that I need to do is just draw a box around them and just delete them, okay? So there you can see I'm getting, I'm getting 15 different plaques out of this sheet, okay? Now, what I would probably do is go into each one of these texts and recreate the text. Now, the only problem with that is that at the moment, because I've exported out, it's no longer text. So you can see these are all vectors. So what you would probably need to do is maybe recreate the Bob and Jen as text prior to actually copying it and then copy it. And then you can edit each one of the text. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing that because I want to show you how the toolpath templates work rather than creating text. Okay, so let's say that I've got all of my plaques here and I want to machine them all now. Now, I don't want to select each one of these. I just want to literally just blast these and machine them. So what I can do is load in that template that I created previously and it will automatically machine all of these. So if I go to toolpaths and then go to load toolpath template, and let's find the template, which is that plaque, select open. And you'll see that I have a little arrow to the left of toolpaths, which means that there are toolpaths there. So if I select that, you see that I've got these red toolpaths. Now red toolpaths mean that they haven't been calculated yet. Okay, now if I go into one of these, let's say that one there, you see how it's automatically selected all of the text. That's because on this toolpath template, the vector association is text. And anything that's on that text layer, it will automatically create a toolpath on. So to do this really quick, what I can do is go to batch calculate. So if I go back to toolpaths and select batch calculate toolpaths. Okay, and it gives you the options for which toolpaths that you want to select, which ones you want to calculate. So you can turn those off if you want to, whichever ones. 
So this is quite useful if you have like quite a lot of tool paths and a lot of vectors. So I've got them all selected. And if you select start, it will give you a progress here. If there's a problem with any, it will say failed. Okay. So if I select start, it's telling me that it's failed. Okay. So you see the V bit carving, this is still in red. So if I come up, it's telling me that it's failed. Now the reason for this is because I haven't defined the material size. So the V-bit carving is basically warning me it doesn't want to cut through the material. I need to tell it what the material size is because otherwise I could cut through the material and into the bed. So it's quite a useful warning. So if I close that, and then go to tool paths and then down here I have set up material. So if I click that, it's exactly the same dialogue that you get if you were in a tool path. So let's set up the material to be three quarters of an inch thick. Okay. And then just select okay. And then if I try that again, so go to batch calculate tool paths and I can select them all if I want to and just calculate again. And this time it should give me a success. Okay, so if we take a look up here, you can see calculating V-bit carving, done. And it should say done on everyone. And you can also see that they're all in white now. And I haven't got any red tool paths. So that's basically just created all of those tool paths for me without having to even go into any of the tool paths and set anything up. Okay. So let's close that and let's rotate it around. Right click and I'm going to simulate all of the tool paths. So select simulate. And you can see that I've got all of my plaques. So this is a really useful way to automate the toolpath process. Okay. And it saves you having to keep on going into the toolpath and changing settings for something that you may have already have done. Okay. So that's how to use toolpath templates.